cohabitating reptiles, keeping multiple in the same enclosure is always wrong, right? Well, no, and if you believe that, you're wrong too. So today, let's go over the top five do's and don'ts for cohabbing correctly. My name's Adam, this is Diamond, you're watching Wiccan Spigot Reptiles, stick around. Let me be careful with what I say here. Cohabbing reptiles isn't always wrong. In a lot of cases, it is wrong. You don't wanna cohab a lot of things. In fact, there are more things that don't work than do work. So let's go over the basic do's and don'ts, but of course, this is not a comprehensive list. You have to do your research. Make sure you know what you're doing if you're putting multiple of the same species together, or in some cases, different species. We'll go a little bit into it, but you have to research this to death. And let's just start off with number five, you do want to research. This is just very obvious. Don't just go and be like, oh, well, I see on Craigslist that there's a whole bunch of, I don't know, bearded dragons and uh, they need a home or leopard geckos is a great example. You see this all the time. I'm just gonna throw them together and hope for the best. Don't do that. In fact, my don't in this category is wing it. Do not wing it. Don't just, oh, well, I think it'll probably be okay. The last owners had 27 leopard geckos in a five gallon enclosure. I can do that. To no, you can't and you shouldn't because that's silly goose stuff. So when you're doing research, research temperatures and humidities and the whole thing and make sure that you have multiple areas for these animals to get those things. For example, Bearded dragons is a controversial one. Most people will tell you that bearded dragons can never be cohabitated. And if you cohab bearded dragons in a 120 gallon enclosure, four by two by two rather, you can't. But if you had say something that was six feet long and two feet deep and I don't know, four feet high, you probably could keep two females together if you follow the rest of the list. But you wanna research first, make sure there's multiple basking areas, make sure that these animals aren't fighting for resources, make sure that the females aren't aggressive with each other. You gotta make sure that you do the research first and know what you're getting yourself into. And of course, research compatibility. I mean, don't put two male leopard geckos together. This is clear and obvious. Even if you have them in a huge enclosure, 300 gallon enclosure, if you go to sleep the next morning, you're gonna be getting one of them off the glass with a hose. It's gonna be some assembly required for one or both. They're gonna to try to kill each other. Don't do this. You have to know the compatibility. Same thing if you have, I don't know, say morning geckos and dart frogs. So many people do this and I love this combination. But if you have big terribilis, I'm talking about the mints or the blackfoots or whatever, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you don't put morning geckos in there because they've been seen eating morning geckos. You could probably get away with a William's eye or some other type of gecko. So don't wing it, do the research, figure it out before you do it. Number four, wait. Wait until these animals are mature. Make sure that they are of the right sex. Don't go, this is something that I actually did and it's a mistake and I've got no problem telling you when I make mistakes. I think it was 20, 14 maybe, and I bought two crested geckos and I put them together and I just left them there. I never really checked to see, oh, are they both gonna grow up to be males and kill, like this is obviously very obvious stuff that I should have done and you should do too. It worked out that it was a male and a female and they were fine and they weren't from the same clutch so they have produced many babies and it worked out great. However, if they were both males, one day, eventually, these geckos would fight. And this is silly because this means that one of the geckos would probably die. At very least, get injured, lose its tail, whatever. So make sure that you wait till these animals are of appropriate size before you put them together. Make sure you wait to find out the sex of these animals because most of the time for most lizards, you do not want to put males together. Now there are exceptions to the rule. Stenodactylus, the dune geckos, for example, so there are of course examples where this is not the case, but for most of the time, uh, males are gonna kill each other. And then of course there's exceptions, right? So dart frogs, for example. I know frogs are amphibians. You don't need to write me a comment. I know, let's not be silly here. Everybody who's into reptiles is in amphibians or for the most part, they, the hobby is together, okay? For most part, most species of say Dendrobates, Tinctorius, whatever, these guys, the females might fight where the males would be completely fine. So you just, do your research, as number five said, and then wait to make sure that these are animals that are ready to go into the same enclosure. Don't just hope for the best, like I did. It worked out for me, but it might not work out for you. So don't just hope for the best, wait. Number three, have a backup plan. Do not get caught sitting on your hands. 
Don't be in a position where, let's suppose, you're going to have two leopard geckos together. Females oftentimes do really well. And just as a bare basic, do more research than this, but in a nutshell, make sure that they're appropriate size, similar age, if they come from the same clutch, even better. Make sure that they're not aggressive towards each other, etc., etc. Either way, put them together in the enclosure. We're going to go what you do after you put them together in a second. But either way, don't just get caught sitting on your hands and not have a backup plan. Don't go buy two female leopard geckos. Oh, I've got a 40 gallon enclosure. I recommend a bigger enclosure for two and it's gonna be fine. Well, what if they start to fight? What then? What do you do? Now you have two fighting geckos and you have one enclosure. You are unprepared. If you fail to prepare, you prepare to fail. This is the case with everything in life for the most part, but either way, especially with animals. So if you, for example, even if it's a breeding thing, it's a cohab for a short amount of time, for example, reticulated pythons. If you have a male and a female reticulated python, okay, and these animals don't get along and they start to bite the crap out of each other, which is something that could happen with retics, it's not the most common thing in the world, but I'm just using that as an example, then now what? What are you going to do? Do you have an enclosure for both of them? Or don't be the, the guy that, oh, I'm going to get two, it's a breeding pair, so I'm going to stick them together and I'll get an enclosure down the road. No, you won't. No, you won't. Don't get the animal until the enclosure is actually at home. If you're in a position like me where you have a hundred enclosures, not a hundred, but tons of empty enclosures, then sure, you can, you know, get something on a whim and have it set up and you know what you're doing and you have all the supplies and you have the thermostat so you can change the temperature and humidity and the whole thing. If that's you, that's different, but that's probably not you. If you're somebody who is just getting into it and you don't have a bunch of empty enclosures, you don't have basically a zoo in your basement like I do, then don't freaking do this. Have a backup plan. Go get a second enclosure. Make sure if you're getting two animals, even if it's, oh, these animals never fight. It's super, whatever, whatever. They're individuals, and I do have female leopard geckos that don't want to be with other females and don't want to be with other males and want to be left alone. There are leopard geckos I have, females, that will kill each other, even if they're appropriate size, same age, the whole thing. Number two, do go bigger. The, uh, the math is not mathy, okay? The math isn't mathing. And what I mean by that is if you have a leopard gecko, and I suggest a very minimum of 20 gallons for one leopard gecko, I prefer a 40. If you're gonna put two together, give them like four feet by two feet, something like that. Something that you'd put a bearded dragon in, for example. Make sure you're giving them ample space so that they can be away from each other. Because at the end of the day, although leopard geckos in the wild, sometimes you'll find a few of them living together, it's super rare, they're gonna always wanna be able to get away from each other. So give them the opportunity to get away from each other. Simple as that. So if you have a bunch of leopard geckos, you could probably put three, honestly, three females in a four foot by two foot enclosure with some height as well. Just make sure you set it up correctly, know what you're doing, do more research than watching this, and don't go bare minimum. Period. I do not recommend this for one gecko or lizard or snake or whatever, but I definitely do not recommend it for two or more, more than two. Number one, observe this is the most important thing do observe don't walk away make sure that you are looking and watching these animals if you're putting these geckos or i don't know why i keep using geckos but lizards turtles whatever that you're putting together to live together make sure you observe make sure you're watching when you put them together don't just put them together oh, okay see ya have a good day bye don't do that make sure you're watching these animals how they interact with each other. Are they showing signs of aggression? Are they showing that they're timid? Are they showing that they don't want to be around each other? Make darn sure that you are doing your job, which is to observe these animals, period. Super important. I've got Schneider skinks. I love these guys. They do a great job of living together. It's a male, female. They can live together full time. And it's just, they don't overbreed with each other. Now there's other animals like Q and false chameleons, for example, which I have. They're actually a red throated, a knoll, anyway, this whole, this whole thing. Basically the male bred the female basically to death. And this is because although they were fine for months and months and months and months, I put them together one day and he injured her to the point where she passed away. And this is just something that although I don't expect you in a breeding situation to always watch every second, make sure that you know what you're doing. The reason that I didn't put them together full time is because I knew that it was possible for him to overbreed her. And same thing if you put two females together, make sure that you're not in a position where, oh, well, they're fighting, but it's probably gonna be okay. It's not. Monkey tail skinks are another great example where I've got a bunch of monkey tail skinks, they do better in groups. However, sometimes two individuals don't like each other. I had Bruce for a while. I had Bruce. 
and I had Abu and I had George and I had them all together, right? One male, two females, pretty standard, big enclosure, should have been fine. However, um, Abu didn't like Bruce at all. So uh, Abu chased Bruce around one day and they were fine for a few days, by the way. And then uh, all of a sudden they're in my office and I see that Abu is chasing around and biting the tail and biting Bruce. And Bruce was a little bit smaller. So Bruce had to find a new home. So that's why I only have two monkey tail skinks and not three, basically. That's the idea. So make sure that you are watching the animals, observing, don't just walk away, period. Let me know in the comments section what you think is the best advice for cohabbing the do's and don'ts. Leave a comment down there, hit the like and subscribe button while you're there. It really helps this channel and it costs you nothing other than a click. Thank you so much. And a special thanks to the Patreon supporters. You guys are freaking amazing. You get discounts on merch. You guys get extra videos. You get one-on-ones, all that, and more for as little as $1 a month. That's it. I do videos on Mondays and Thursdays. So that means I'll see you in the next one.